Welcome to Up to the Minute. It's hashtag Finally Friday, October 23rd. Yes, we've made it through another week. The weekend is upon us. But first, we've got a half hour or so of your HCC news and information. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, before we get to our guest this morning, Brittany Pacheco is joining us from her home studio. Good morning, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd, and good morning to everyone joining us for this Friday's edition of Up to the Minute. We're in for a treat, of course. I do want to remind everyone to please follow us on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and don't forget about our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest uploads from us. And last but not least, we need our audience help. I've been saying this all week long, but I'm going to keep saying it until, I don't know, the end of time or whenever this show is over. Um, but please share this uh, podcast by hitting that share button at the bottom of this screen. And please, please get others to follow us on our social media pages. That way they just know all the great information that's coming from HCC. That's right, Brittany. And you got a special announcements later on in the show? I do, Todd. So that'll be in our events and announcements section. Okay. So if everyone wants to uh, hear what that special announcement is, uh, just be sure to tune in until the end of the show. All right, stick around for that. And thank you, Brittany. If you do uh, have any comments during the show, make sure you leave them in the comments section or questions. Brittany will get those answered for you as well. We've got two special guests today. Uh, Dr. Katrina Gary Forte is joining us. She's the faculty practicum coordinator at HCC's Human Services Technology Department. Good morning, Dr. Gary Forte. We'll get you to unmic your microphone if you could. There we go. Good morning. Let's try this. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, you've got a big event coming up next week on Tuesday, a very important event. We want to talk more with you about that. So if we can get you to stand by for a little while, we will be with you momentarily. But first, it is Friday. That means an appearance by Dr. Jimmy Adams. He is the college operations officer out at HCC Northeast. Also, he's our resident poet. Good morning, Dr. Adams. We can get you to unmute your microphone as well. There we Good go. Good morning, everybody. Good to see y'all on a Friday. Good to see you. Before you get to your poem, I want to ask you about, as always, you have an update from things going on at Northeast College right now? Well, uh, you know, we got a lot of good things going on. We got the voting, uh, early voting going over at our North uh, Forest campus. Also, we have a two testing sites now, one at North Forest for the uh, COVID-19 testing, the free testing at North Forest campus and also at our Northeast campus. Uh, we've uh, in full swing with our, all of our courses, our lab-based courses being opened up on pretty much four of our campuses, uh, welding, um, automotive, uh, EMS, uh, you know, fire and uh, fire safety, criminal justice, so all those, those classes are running and it's going pretty smooth right now. What's the voting situation been like? A lot of people are always wondering where uh, are there lots of, is there big crowds there? Uh, do you have a surge time? Have you noticed a large lot, a lot of lines out there at North Forest? Yeah, uh, it started out kind of slow, but once folks found out that we were, you know, doing the early voting over at North Forest, things started to pick up. So the big time is in the morning at noon and then in the afternoon so at five yeah. so it's uh it's picking it's picking up and we're getting more and more each day so and we want to remind thing. folks during the early voting if you're a registered voter in harris county you can vote at any location not just your designated one yeah. get it done early so you don't have to stand in line um on election day and uh we have several of our hcc campuses that have early voting locations go to harrisvotes.org for all the information on that dr adams i want to get to your piece that you have for us this morning this one called Daddy Why. Tell us a bit about it. Uh, well, I wrote this piece, uh, you know, uh, I worked for Long Star College for a long, for about 10 years. And uh, we often had, uh, you know, black male summits, uh, bringing in young, young men, you know, from all of the school districts. And, uh, you know, we brought in uh, speakers and, um, you know, my intro, I can talk a little bit my intro will give you a, a good background on it. So I, I, I'll just go ahead and, and, and read that. Okay. Because it's, you know, it's basically what I'm saying. And, um, 
based once I give the um, the intro, you'll kind of get a feel for kind of why I wrote this piece. Let's uh, go ahead and hear from you. Okay, it's uh, in June uh, 4th, 2004 is uh, the day my daddy died. He had suffered a second stroke that year and was put in the hospital. Uh, a week before that, before he died, I was able to talk with him, you know, what I call man to man. And I told him I was not pleased on how he had treated, you know, our mama and, and us over the course of, of his life. And as uh, tears rolled down his face, he agreed to that. And then in 2008, I uh, attended a black male summit at, um, at um, uh, one of our events at uh, Lone Star. And during that event, um, one of the speakers asked the young men if they could forgive one person in their lives, who would it be? And a large number of percentage of those young men I wanted to forgive their daddy. So he asked them to come up to the front of the room and tell the audience why. So hence the title of my poem, Daddy Why. And it was uh, as if he, they were talking and taking words out of my mouth based on some of the experiences, you know, uh, with my dad. And so, uh, you know, when you look at statistics, their number of children living in single parent homes has nearly doubled in, since 1960. And there, and to me, there, there are too many young black males being raised in single parent homes. So, um, and where the, you know, the father is absent. So this is, you know, not a new phenomenon. It's been happening for decades and single moms, I really want, I feel your pain but I want you to stand strong, you're not alone. And so to the dads out there, you need to look deep into yourselves and figure this out because your families need them, uh, need you in their lives. So this is my reflection of this uh, far too common reality and it's titled uh, Daddy Why. So Nathan, cue the music. My daddy, was a rolling stone. He ran off and he left us all alone. He drifted in and out of my life. He had three outside children and another wife. Mama, don't cry. Tell me, daddy, why? We often went without food to eat. Mama had to work two jobs to make ends meet. Our house was cold, we hardly had heat, we barely had a place to sleep. Mama, don't cry, tell me, Daddy, why I had to make the projects my home. I often lie in bed alone, wondering if it was something I did wrong. Mama, don't cry, tell me, Daddy, why you didn't pay child support? You didn't give us a dime, how do you think we were gonna make it? You locked up, doing time. Mama, don't cry, tell me, Daddy, why did you play so many games? You beat on us and you called us names. You ought to be ashamed. Mama, don't cry, tell me, Daddy, why? When you were around, all you did was put us down. You always tried and tell us what to do. You didn't care what you were putting us through. Now on your deathbed, lonely and scared, you want to be my friend. It's not easy now to let you in, but you know, I forgive you, but I won't forget. I hope in your heart you can find some regret because only God can show you what to do. Only he knows what you put us through. So mama, don't cry, we got by. Tell me. Daddy, why? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Certainly a song that really hits a, uh, hits a, hits a note with all of us. You know, I, I was thinking of the lyrics of the song, Papa Was a Rolling Stone by The yeah. Temptations. And I know you must have got some inspiration from that. But when, you know, when I think of that song over the years, and, you know, I listen to a lot of 70s music now. That's kind of my, my passion. But yeah. when I hear that song, 
you hear the lyrics and it used to be a great dance song, but really it's, it's, it's a social piece, a piece yeah. documenting what happened in childhood, just like yours. Yeah. And you know, Papa was a Rolling Stone. I was a member of a uh, singing group called the T-Town Temps back in 1970, uh, uh, 73 when I started college. And we won first place <laughs> in our uh, talent uh, contest. And that was the song that we wanted with, <laughs> believe it or not. But uh, yeah, um, I, I'm inspired by a lot of a lot of things, and you know this was happening to me, and I I didn't know this was uh, you know a single parent home. You know my dad was in and out, uh, but we had a good relationship once I got into college and moved on. You know, uh, but this has been happening since I was. Uh, was born and this was back in the you know 50 so still relevant today yeah it just seems like everything that i've written it, it, you know everything is happening today that happened back in the past so and uh, i don't know if that's just a cycle of things or if it's just more troubling that the problems keep coming up they keep reoccurring and see my thing with you know with the journey reality with these you know these pieces is to to really bring reality you know to the forefront and let us not forget on really what's going on in our society you know this is an issue not just you know it's all over you know our society all over the united states you know internationally as well uh and you know there was some statistic 86 percent of single parent families in the u.s are led by mothers you know i was pretty much raised by my mom so um so it's a major issue that we need to keep on the forefront. Even though we're in this pandemic, we need to continue to think about these social issues and, and address these things, you know? Dr. Jimmy Adams, we always appreciate you joining us on a Friday morning. Have a great week. Good luck out there at Northwest Northeast College. All right, man. Y'all take care and be safe out there. Thank you, Dr. Adams. We'll see All you right. again. We're going to move on to Dr. Gary Forte, and uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute your mic again. Good to see you with us this morning. Dr. Gary Forte, I want to talk to you about next Tuesday's event because you're in an event uh, with HCC's counseling department to lead a virtual presentation called The Effects of Alcohol and Drugs Amongst College Students. Tell us a bit about some of the things you're going to be highlighting during that uh, presentation next week. Unlike um, the past, I'm going to focus on the current current pandemic and drug trends that are happening in college uh, campuses because we are facing a new situation with new college students. Yeah. So I want to emphasize those things this time around. Well, you know, it, I've got to say when back in the, the 80s, I'm going to date myself when I went to college, um, you know, it was like a rite of passage, you know, there were there seemed to be a lot of drinking involved at the college I went to, I really didn't see other substances, but there was a lot of drinking involved. Um, that was just a college way of life. But when you look back at those days, those are very dangerous times because it's there's a very fine line you can cross. Um, with heavy drinking and partying to where you're facing a problem. And I guess college students now really need to be aware of that, especially the times we're in and the crisis we're facing. Absolutely. Um, I recall when I went to college, um, I went to Texas State and pr prior to that, it was Southwest Texas. It yeah. had a bad reputation. Yeah, <laughs> there was a name for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Right. Um, I cannot say those things got any better <laughs> going yeah. myself. Um, but there is a lot of binge drinking in college campuses that coupled with people leaving home for the first time without parental guidance and so, so social isolation of the pandemic. Those are all a recipe for increased alcohol and drug use. And, you know, I, I think we, we can't uh, uh, skip over the fact that it's so easy to get alcohol poisoning. You know, when you got these drinking games involved, beer pong, you know, the, the beer bong with the tube that people drink out of, it's very easy to get alcohol poisoning. You hear about it every semester where a freshman or somebody at a unfortunately passes away. Absolutely. Um, part of my presentation next week, we'll talk about that, the warning signs of binge drinking and how to get help. A lot of students feel they will get in trouble 
if the situation happens and they don't call and reach out for help for the other person and there are things in place where that person that reports does not get in trouble. Let's talk about how isolation is playing a role in this because many of us, um, you know, I, I'm lucky I live with my spouse and we're together a lot. So that's great. But a lot of people are alone right now during this pandemic. And, and some of them may not have left home except for going to the grocery and a few random things for months. And that could easily lead to alcohol or substance abuse or dependency. Absolutely. Um, the CDC has released information that at the same time this year, anxiety has gone up two times and depression has gone up by four um, times of last year. I myself am one of those that don't leave home, but to go to the grocery store because I have a six month old son, I had him at the height of um, COVID and I have to protect him. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody has their reasons for not leaving. And that's that's understandable. Let's you kind of touched on this earlier, but let's talk about perception versus reality for first time college students, because, as I mentioned, you, you know, you experience that at Texas State where you, you go off and you have that rite of passage where there may be a little bit too much drinking involved, but it still can be a very dangerous situation. Correct. And um, a lot of people spend years planning out what their college uh, experience is going to look like, um, just as we plan years out on other things. And um, getting there to that situation during this time specifically is can be quite um, depressing for some people because it looks totally different than they thought it would and planned it out to be. Do you have some coping tips for students um, after traumatic events or being in a lockdown, um, how they can seek comfort in other ways besides drugs or alcohol? I definitely do. Definitely one of the biggest tips is to talk about it. There are people, everyone's going through this in the world right now. So we definitely can talk about it and, and gain some sense of um, uniformity. Um, another thing is to reach out for help. There are resources just like this presentation we're given. The counseling department at HCC is has been um, up and, and running the whole time. So we are yeah. here to help. Well, that's one of the things we've been stressing to our, our students. You know, we've had many of the counselors on um, talking about the fact that we are available for our students just because we're in a lockdown or in a somewhat lockdown, sequestered, I guess, in many cases, doesn't mean that your services are available and people can have counseling sessions or reach out for help online. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Tell us about, you're with the Human Service Technology Department. Tell us exactly what your department does and in, in, um, how you work with students, faculty, and staff. Well, we have uh, several different programs within our program. One is the community health worker where an individual would uh, eventually go out and educate um, people on health issues such as diabetes, um, HIV. We also have the LCDC program, which is uh, geared to, for them to be a substance abuse professional in Texas, um, along with human services and other programs. And for folks who want to know more about your programs, where can they go on the website? They can go to the um, Human Services Technology Program on HCC, and it gives a description of all of the different programs we offer, as well as reach out to one of the staff members. You had mentioned in your own case, um, you've been isolated many because you have a, a newborn in the house. But tell us, um, what have you been hearing from the faculty and staff and the students that you've talked with on how they've been dealing with adjusting to living life virtually and online? Um, I've heard the frustration. I always carve out at least one part of class to see how my students are doing. First of all, it's really good to see them. Right. virtually. It, it brings me comfort. And I do carve out that time to see how they're coping because I myself have struggled. It, it's balancing your work life and your home life is one thing when you're in the office, but combining those things. And so I am lenient with the student and all the staff that I've talked to are, you know, practicing grace and leniency and the students are receptive to that and grateful for that. And the school is the only thing sometimes they have to help keep their sanity. 
Well, you, that, that's a good point because this interaction, you know, one thing early on at HCC TV, we started having daily meetings um, Mondays through Fridays where the staff, we, we'd have little staff meetings. We could know the projects we're working on, but we could also see each other, you know, and know when somebody's having a difficult time. And I think it's important if, even if you can't see people personally to at least make that connection virtually during these times. It absolutely is. And then to remember that all of these things, the depression, anxiety, social isolation, already increase alcohol and drug use alone. And some of our students could also be facing um, being underemployed. I know a lot of employers have, especially if you're an hourly worker, a lot of employers had cut back on hours, especially for the, the what was an essential worker. They're cutting back on those hours right now. And they could be facing being laid off from a job, being underemployed, or having trouble finding a job while they're still trying to keep up their classes. Correct. I know our department is hiring um, right now I think two interns it is for the department. Well, Dr. Gary Forte, we appreciate you joining us this morning. We look forward to the uh, presentation next week. If you're wondering how you can watch the present presentation, uh, we're gonna place in the social media post, you saw a flyer, but we'll also place the information and the link in the social media post for this show. Dr. Gary Forte, thanks for being here on the show this morning. Thank you. Thank you, we'll see you again. Okay, see you again. And we're going to move on to Brittany Pacheco. Brittany, a lot of announcements going on this weekend. I do. So I am going to kind of set it up as I am sharing my screen. So what happened five years ago tomorrow, Saturday, October 24th, was, you know, the, the day was very rainy. Oh, there we go. And it was flooding, but two people still got together with their friends and family and decided, hey, we're gonna go through and get married. So tomorrow is my five year anniversary. Well, congratulations. So are you guys gonna, now I've gotta first say that you don't look a day older. Oh, well, thank you. If anything, you look younger. So, you know, you don't look a day older. So that, that's great. Um, do y'all have <laughs> anything big planned for this weekend? So uh, we're actually very, very busy um, with some family and other uh, obligations engagements, if you will. And yeah. um, so tonight we're actually going to carve out some time to uh, venture out to Gayukaku, which is a great uh, Japanese restaurant where you have to cook your own food. Um, oh, it's cool. something, it's actually something that Frank Cooper um, introduced myself to, and then I introduced it to John and now we're obsessed. So is it um, like one of those Korean barbecue type of restaurants? It's, where, it's, where it's like that, food? but it's Japanese. Okay. All right. Yeah. That sounds so good. we're going to do that tonight since tomorrow is a very busy day for us um, with, like I said, other engagements, yeah. but um, yeah, five years and um, he's still around. He's That's still all I'm going to say. You got to be doing something right. Well, congratulations to you both. By the way, when you go to dinner tonight, take some pictures and we want to see those on Monday. Yeah, I sure will. I'm interested to see how that'll look. All right. Yeah. Definitely. All right, Brittany, congratulations again. Have a good weekend with your hubby. And uh, we're going to get on to some HCC news and announcements. There's a music recital about to happen. It's today, folks. The fall 2020 recital is on YouTube. They're doing everything from classical to jazz, maybe a little pop involved with that as well. It's 3.15 to 4 p.m. Uh, today. Free, of course, no registration is required. You can uh, simply go, well, we'll put the link to where, how you can now watch this on YouTube in the uh, social media post for the show. Life Hacking 101, that's happening out at Northwest College, Brittany. Yeah, so this is a presentation from Dr. Alyssa Dijon from the cosmetology department. We've uh, met with her before. She is an incredible instructor and she will be presenting visual interviews, creating a lens of success. That is happening next Tuesday, October 27th at noon. Now, if you're interested in participating in this Life Hacking 101 event, you can email nw.osl at student.hccs.edu. We'll be sure to include that email in this post. And Todd, tell them about Rec Sports. Yeah, today's the day. It's Friday. That means twerk out, twerk fitness with, with, who's going to be? With doing? the V Sisters. That's yes. right. The V Sisters are leading it up again tonight. And on Monday, they've got deep stretching. But tonight, twerk out. So for all these sports and events, you can email Christian Andrews. We'll have the uh, email link 
in the or email in this post for this show as well. Uh, as we mentioned earlier with our guest on Tuesday, put this on your calendar, the effects of alcohol and drugs on college students. Uh, it's Tuesday, October 27th from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, that link will be in the social media post. And also, Brittany, um, suicide prevention training, very important topic along with the drug and alcohol abuse. But this is very important, and we're doing some training uh, next week for our students, I believe. We are. So this is offered through our HCC counseling and it's finishing its virtual suicide prevention training sessions with a mission to reduce suicidal behavior and save lives. Now, this time we want you all to know about the one and only faculty and staff session. Now that's coming up this Tuesday, October 27th at 10 a.m. And the final student session is going to be next Thursday, October 29th at 10 a.m. So space is limited and RSVP is required. So be sure to email Roman Alvarez or Tamara Petty. Uh, we'll be sure to include though that information at the at in this post rather and also the graphic here. We've also been scheduling it on our social media pages. So be sure to participate in this very important training because you never know when that training is going to come into play with yeah. a loved one or or you know someone that you may have never met. You know, you just right. don't know. You don't know. Um, one thing we also want to promote, Project Homeworld Virtual Talks. That's happening out at uh, the West Houston Institute, but it's all virtual now. 3D printing for good is the subject. 2 to 3 p.m. Thursday, October 29th. Uh, Charlotte Craft, an innovator and leader in affordable large format 3D printing, will speak. Uh, you can get more information to register and uh, watch the presentation at hccs.edu slash homeworld. And Brittany, our tutors are available if you need some help. Don't pass this up. That's right. So tutors are meeting with students virtually through Microsoft Teams, thanks to our Academic Success Center. Now, our tutors will help with staying on track with coursework, understanding assignments, as well as improving study skills, because let's face it, that's what students need in order to have a successful semester and reach their end goal of getting that degree or certification. So. If you're interested to utilizing this free, again, free uh, resource, be sure to call 713-718-8184 or go to the link in this post to uh, reserve your meeting time with a tutor. Uh, a couple of things available for you virtually right now, students. We have an online services toolkit. Uh, we'll have the link for that in the post. Also, the virtual lobby, just go to the homepage. And if you have questions, you can enter them in the virtual lobby. Uh, you can get a Zoom meeting, a phone call, or an email. Those are all available. And virtual open house sessions, they're happening through this month in October. Uh, they're happening online along with college transfer fairs, Brittany. That's right. So for our open house sessions, Todd, everyone can visit hccs.edu slash information sessions where uh, you can see what when the next next date is. And they're, they're going to be covering admissions application, financial aid, and much, much more. Now with the virtual college transfer fairs, uh, be sure to check the website daily for dates and times from colleges such as Prairie View a and Texas a and all the branches from U of H and UT, as well as the University of Thomas and many, many more. Now that website is hccs.edu slash transfer fair. That's right. Uh, that wraps up today's show. Next week, we've got some very special guests, Dr. Madeline Barillo Hopkins of HCC Southwest. Yeah, she's the president out there. She'll be on the show on Tuesday. On Monday, we got another president. We will. We're going to be joined by our HCC Northwest College president, Dr. Zachary Hodges, who will share how the transition has been going and to have some students back on campus and what all that is like. And, you know, both the presidents will be also be discussing training for job opportunities. Uh, and of course, there's an unemployment need that's happening because of COVID. Many people may have lost their jobs. Well, HCC is retraining you. We have programs for that. Both Dr. Hopkins Barillo and our Barillo Hopkins and Dr. Hodges will be speaking on that as well. Brittany, have a great weekend. Happy anniversary. Tell your husband happy anniversary as well. Will do. Thanks, Todd. And thank you all for joining us this morning for Up to the Minute. Be sure to like us on our social media pages, YouTube. Don't forget to share this podcast. And on behalf of Todd and myself, we hope that you have a great weekend and we'll see you again Monday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live.